Hi there, and welcome to my presentation on the irrationality of E. Firstly, an introduction. The exponential number is a famous mathematical constant. We denote this number by the letter E. Like pi, the number E pops up in various places and is important to many areas of mathematics. You might remember the number pi as being the ratio of the circumference of a circle to its diameter. Let's look at one of the many ways that we can define the exponential number E. E is equal to the summation from n equals 0 up to infinity of 1 over n factorial. That means E is equal to 1 over 0 factorial plus 1 over 1 factorial plus 1 over 2 factorial plus and so on forever. Of course, remembering what the factorial notation means, we can write this as follows. The decimal expansion of E starts off as follows. 2.7182818 and then so on, as we can see here. So you can see E is approximately 2.7, if you want to be simple. So before we ask a very interesting question about E, let's quickly revisit rational and irrational numbers. A rational number is a number which can be written as a fraction of integers. So a number is rational if we can write it as A over B, where B, the denominator, is not zero. Of course, it doesn't make sense to divide by zero. Alternatively, another way we can think of this is that a rational number is a number whose decimal expansion either terminates, so it just stops, or it repeats on and on forever. It has like a pattern, and we can always predict what's going to come next. Here are some examples of rational numbers. Firstly, 3 over 7 is rational because it's just a fraction of integers. Similarly, 9 over 15,234,523 is also rational. 0 0.4327 terminates and so is rational. And then the final one, 6.2413,2413,2413 and the dots indicate that that continues forever is also rational because it has that repeating pattern. Conversely, an irrational number is a number which is not rational. So we can't write an irrational number as a fraction of integers. Also, an irrational number won't have a terminating or repeating decimal expansion. Here are some examples of irrational numbers. The square root of 2 is an irrational number. There's no way to write the square root of 2 as a fraction. And if you look at its decimal expansion, it's going to be, you're not going to be able to find a pattern in it ever. Pi, of course, is a very famous number, and that's also irrational. Log base 2 of 3 is irrational, and also is phi, otherwise known as the golden ratio, which is also equal to 1 plus square root of 5 over 2. There's a very interesting theorem about irrational and rational numbers, and that's simply this. There are more irrationals than rationals. It seems very counterintuitive at first, but I mean, if you usually you'll see a proof of this in your sec, in the second year of your maths degree, should you be so bold as to do one. So an interesting question we can ask, and we often ask this when we define a number, is the exponential number e rational or irrational? Well, of course, the title of this presentation probably gave it away, but the number e is irrational. What we're going to do now is prove this statement. The proof's not too difficult to follow, but you might want to follow along with a piece of paper and a pen and just sort of make notes, and you might have to go back and refer to things earlier. Okay, so we're going to proceed in the same way that we do for most proofs of irrationality. What we do to show that something's irrational, we assume that it is actually rational, and then we show that this assumption yields a statement which is contradictory to what we expect. We get something funny out of it. I guess a world where E is rational is flawed. There's something very, very wrong with it. This forces us to re sort of reject our assumption. 
and that will make us accept that E is actually irrational. Okay, so let's do that. Let's assume that E is rational, and that means that we can write E as a fraction of integers, A over B, where of course B is not zero. And we're going to say that A and B are both positive integers here. Okay, what we're going to do is use this assumption about E being rational, and also we're going to use the definition of E, where we had with the 1 over n factorial summation, and what we're going to do is we're going to show that we can use this to come up with an integer which is between 0 and 1. Of course, no such integer exists, so this is going to be our contradiction. So that's what we're going to work towards. We're going to invent a number, it's going to be an integer, and it will be between 0 and 1. And that's funny, that doesn't agree with what we believe, and so that's going to be our contradiction. So let's define our funny number as follows. Okay, we'll call it x, and x is going to be equal to b factorial, keeping in mind that b of course is the denominator in the rational expression of e, so we've written e as a over b, assuming it's rational. So x is equal to b factorial multiplied by e take the summation from n equals 0 up to b of 1 over n factorial. Now of course, let's firstly see that x is an integer. This funny number we've defined, it looks a bit blah, is an integer. So first, let's substitute in e equals ab. That's what we've assumed e can be written as, where a and b are integers. If we do that, we'll simply put in a over b where e is, is simple enough, and then multiplying the b factorial to each of the terms inside the bracket gives us that x is equal to a times b take 1 factorial, of course, when b factorial multiplies a over b, the b in the b factorial cancels with the b on, in the denominator, and that just leaves b take 1 factorial on top. And of course, if we multiply b factorial by the summation, then we're just simply multiplying each of the summons by b factorial. We can see here, it's important to notice that, well, a times b take 1 factorial is an integer, because they're both just integers, and also, Think about the summation, b factorial over n factorial, and remember that we're summing from n equals 0 up to b. So each of those n's in the summation are between 0 and b. And so when we do b factorial divided by n factorial, the, we're going to get cancellation completely on the bottom and leaving things on the top, which means that this summation is just going to be a summation of integers, and therefore the summation itself is an integer. So our expression for x is just simply a difference of integers and therefore all of x is just an integer. Okay, so x is an integer and now we're going to show that x is positive or if you like greater than zero. So back to our the way we defined x and now this time instead of putting an e equals a over b we'll put in the actual definition of e. We said that e was a summation from n equals zero to infinity of one over n factorial. If we chuck that where e is, we simply get the following. Now let's look inside the brackets. We're summing 1 over n factorial from 0 up to infinity, but we're taking away a summation of 1 over n factorial from 0 up to b. So we're removing heaps of terms from our original summation. And so if we, if there's a bit of cancellation between these two summations, basically we're just going to be summing 1 over n factorial from n equals b plus 1 up to infinity. And of course, multiplying the summation by b factorial is the same as multiplying each of those terms by b factorial. So it just slips in there. We can see here that this is just a summation of positive numbers. And so x is a summation of positive numbers and x has to be positive, so greater than 0. So that's done, that's easy enough. Now here's the important bit. We've shown that x is an integer and that x is positive but now we're going to show that x is less than 1. This is going to be the core part of our contradiction. So let's do it, and it's a bit tricky. So in the previous slide, we had that x was equal to the summation from n equals b plus 1 up to infinity of b factorial over n factorial. That's what we got to. Let's examine each of these summons in turn. Let's look at b factorial over n factorial. Now remembering that n starts at b plus 1 and goes upwards, if you look at the summation, 
the denominator is bigger than the top. So what's B factorial? Well, B factorial is B times B take 1 times B take 2 all the way down to 1. And N factorial is N times N take 1 times N take 2 all the way down to 1. So because the top has more terms, sorry, because the bottom has more terms than the top, there's going to be cancellation with things just left on the bottom. Of course, we can go for a simple inequality here. The smallest term on the bottom is b plus 1. And so this is going to be bounded as follows. Because there are n minus b of those terms on the bottom. And each of those is bigger than b plus 1. But because it's reciprocated, we get less than or equal to. Now remember that even though we have less than or equal to, the above inequality is going to be strict when n is greater than or equal to b plus 2. The strictness is important because it's going to give us the following. From before we had that x is equal to this summation, and we know that each of the b factorial over n factorials is less than or equal to 1 over b plus 1 to the power of n minus b. But of course, we're going to get a strict inequality because for all the n's that are greater than b plus 1, we're going to get that strictness. And so that strictness is going to propagate through to the whole summation like that. What we do now is a sort of typical thing to make things a bit easier to read. We change the index of summation. We can see that there's a power of n minus b. That gets a bit wobbly when we're summing over n. It's a bit hard to follow. So we're going to change n minus b to k. So we're changing our summation variable. That gives us that x is less than the summation from k is 1 to infinity of 1 over b plus 1 to the k. But of course, this is just a geometric series. It's 1 over b plus 1. Sorry, yeah, 1 over b plus 1 plus 1 over b plus 1 squared plus 1 over b plus 1 cubed and so on. Now recall that a convergent geometric series with a first term of a and a common ratio of r sums to a over 1 minus r. Our geometric series has its first term and common ratio both as 1 over b plus 1. So we're going to sub, so a is 1 over b plus 1 and r is 1 over b plus 1 and we're going to sub these into this formula for the sum of the geometric series. So this will give us of course we already had this x is less than that sum but that sum is equal to a 1 over b plus 1 and then we have next to it 1 over 1 take r r also being 1 over b plus 1. Now what we want to do is sort of fiddle with the expression on the right. Okay, so we work with the expression on the right by multiplying. I mean, it's just a fraction times a fraction. So let's multiply the two fractions. We multiply the numerators. 1 times 1 gives us 1. And we'll multiply the denominators. b plus 1 times 1 take 1 over b plus 1. Now multiplying the denominators together, it turns out that we simply get b. So we just have that x is less than 1 over b. But b is an integer, a positive integer in fact. So 1 over b is always going to be less than or equal to 1. So x is less than 1 over b. 1 over b can at most be 1. So x is less than 1. And that's our contradiction. Because we're seeing that x is an integer. It's bigger than 0. It's smaller than 1. And that's a contradiction. There is no integer between 0 and 1. So having reached an obvious contradiction, we now know that our initial assumption was false. Therefore, we reject our initial assumption that E was rational, and we see that E is an irrational number.